What's going on champs and champettes, it's FireMonkey here and welcome to a tutorial of the brand new F model version, F model 4. Now before this video begins, I simply wanted to mention something. Things can change, so if something that you see in this video doesn't work, it may have been removed or modified. Obviously this is just kind of like a general idea of how to use the program, so hopefully this is helpful and the rest of it, if anything changes, you're just going to have to kind of figure out on your own. But with that said, this video has been timestamped and all the information is included. Included. So if you need info on a certain feature, just click to the timestamps in the description down below, and with that said, let's get right into the video. Alrighty, so I want to start off this actual segment of the video by saying don't be intimidated by the video length depending on how long it is. I've timestamped everything and this is just my way of trying to go through literally everything possible so that you have a smooth experience with the application. Now I've pretty much fresh installed F model here, I've deleted all of my actual modifications from it, meaning that as I go along with this, it's pretty much going to be exactly the same as what you guys do. So the first thing you want to do after you've installed F model is simply put double click it to launch it. Now it will tell you right away um, what game do you want to select. Now for me I don't have another game such as Valorant installed, I only really have Fortnite on this computer as of right now, so it's just going to be like I can choose between Fortnite or Fortnite Live. Now the difference is Fortnite Live actually is a way to data mine Fortnite without really having it on your computer. It is a little bit slower because when you go to extract something you actually download the little chunk that that file is in, but it is a way to leak if you don't have enough space in your computer to actually download Fortnite in itself. But if you do have Fortnite already installed, you already have the latest update, you want to select Fortnite for this one because it's just faster overall and it goes off of your actual files. So obviously for this, I'm going to choose Fortnite, and if you can't find your game, just click the three dots here, find the path, and go to your packs folder, and then simply put, put it in there. But since I have that set up, I'm just going to click OK. Now an error that I accidentally uncovered while making this tutorial originally that some of you guys may actually happen is when you first launch it, it doesn't actually grab the pack files. It, you, sometimes it'll error out here with something about like uh, null or whatever, don't worry about that. All you really have to do is click directory, AES, and then click refresh. This will load all of the current Fortnite AES keys. Now if you choose a different game, it may not have the AES key there. So you may have to go to like Google or something, search up for example Valorant AES key and take it from there. But what an AES key is, it's basically your way to view the files. Now some of them will be blank and that just means that that file is currently encrypted and we can't actually get into it to figure out what's inside of it. Now, with all that set up and with all these files set up that we can view, what you want to do is go to your settings. Because settings are the most important thing to making sure F model is as set up for you, it's as comfy as you for you as you want it. So the first thing here is we have output directory and game directory. Now game directory, as we already did it with the beginning of the video, was basically selecting where our game files were. So if you ever need to make a modification on the fly, you can do it here. However, a restart will be required for those changes to go into effect. We also have the output directory, which is this folder right here. This is the output directory. Personally, I don't like keeping it right next to my F model, so I usually click the three dots and I make a new folder in my actual documents folder called F model and I basically redirect it there. Now that will restart F model once I click OK, but it will move this folder basically elsewhere so it's not connected to these three files at all. Basically, it's a way to declutter your life if you have it on like your desktop or something. Now, update mode, you don't really have to test that, you don't really have to like touch that at all really. Same with UE4 versions and UE4 subversions. Now obviously, if you hover over these, it'll tell you what they do. So update mode will basically give you like the most broken but up-to-date builds of F model available. Stable is just kind of like the newest release of F model. UE4 versions and subversions, um, like I just mentioned, don't really touch these unless you know what you're doing. These are already set up by default for Fortnite, so you don't really have to use these at all. Assets languages, this won't change F model itself, so this will still say like general creator key bindings. But when you generate an icon, it will be in whatever language you selected. So let's say I'm a Spanish Fortnite leaker, I would choose like Espanol, and then that will be the language that my assets actually extract in. Now, keep directory structure. This is another one of the things that I would say don't touch. The, what this basically does is if you go here to textures, 
If you have this disabled, they'll all just go in the textures folder, which could be good if you're trying to leak fast. However, if you're trying to export things such as materials or meshes, having this disabled will actually break that ability, so you want to keep it enabled if you plan to export things such as meshes in the future to hopefully get more Fortnite leaks out of it. Now, compressed audio, I wouldn't really recommend changing that at all. There's nothing really you have to do with that. For AS Reload at launch, that's up to you. Personally, I like to have it on always just so whenever I launch F model, if something's been decrypted, it automatically grabs the AES key for me instead of me having to manually go to the AES selection and clicking reload as you guys saw me do at the beginning of the video. Now, Discord Rich Presence is another one of those optional things. It basically tells everyone on Discord that, hey, he's currently looking at stuff in F model. Here's how many packs he has loaded. And that's really up to you. I'm just going to select never for this tutorial so I can stay in the shadows while I help you guys get ready. Now, once you've had all that selected, you chose what you prefer, we're going to go over to Creator. Now, this is only for Fortnite. I don't really think that they support uh, Valorant or anything when it comes to the Creator. If I remember correctly, Valorant has their own design in F model that doesn't have any customizable options. But first off, let's talk about Cosmetic Shop icon. Disabled, it will just be the close-up icon like if it was in your locker. And enabled, can't really see it here, but it will be the icon as if you were to see it in the item shop. Zoomed out, full body type of thing. Now, let's talk about this. No background, removes the background. No text, removes the text. And same with no background, that removes the text as well, but it's kind of just like, hey, here's the image. Default gives you the most amount of information. As you guys can kind of see here, it tells you the name, description, the set it's a part of, and the season it was introduced in, as well as what type it is and how you obtain it. Now, there is also Flat and Cataba. Flat is pretty much the same information, but a kind of cooler design. Could be weird depending on the length of some words, but it is a nice looking design. And the newest design is Cataba, which is personally my favorite design. When you go in here, you'll see this, and you do lose a bit of information. You lose the season it was introduced in and the set it's a part of. However, you do get a nicer design that looks overall better and more modern because it's trying to match that of the new item shop design in Fortnite. So go through here, play around, figure out which one you think looks the best, and something that is different from F Model 3 is that watermarking your stuff's gone. Simply put, these are the actual Fortnite files, and a lot of leakers have gone away from watermarking stuff, so technically, watermarking is kind of just dead at this point. Obviously, you could modify F model if you understand that stuff and add your own watermark, but overall, people like me just aren't watermarking stuff anymore, and that option's been completely removed. Now for key bindings, this is pretty much just, you can go through here, you can see what they do, and you can either pick to change them, so let's say I want left switch to be R, I can do that, or if I want Q, which is the default, I usually keep it at default, I can do that. I'm pretty sure that seeing this is pretty obvious, it just changes what the buttons on your keyboard actually do when you interact with F model. So once you've made all your changes, just click OK, and if you've changed something like the output directory like I did here, it's obviously going to restart it, so as we see, a restart's going to happen, it will load everything, and there's a chance that it might not grab the AS key or loading stays on a little bit longer than normal. If that's the case, all you really have to do, and this could cause some bugs, is just press escape. Now, once you press escape, sometimes I've had this issue where it soft locks. I don't really know what's going on with that. Um, you really just kind of got to mess with it because there are some bugs with F model, of course, and if something like this happens where it gets stuck on loading, all you can really do is close out of F model, open it back up, and just try waiting a little bit longer, being patient, and if that doesn't work, pressing escape to just skip over it. As you can see here, it actually completed as I was about to end the recording segment. So yeah, it's just kind of like a thing where it may load a little bit longer than normal and you may have to just restart F model. But with that said, it's time to actually load files and showcase what all that's about. So before we actually load the files, I do want to mention something. There are these options such as single, multiple, all, all new, and all modified. Now, all will pretty much just load every single one of these files that it can that it has the AAS key for. So if we just click load right here, as you can see, stuff will start popping up in a moment once it reads everything. So you can see here, we have literally every single Fortnite file that I have downloaded right there. Now, what multiple will do is, let's say I only wanted to load pack chunk zero, and you hold control to actually select these on your keyboard. So you hold control and you click. 
uh, we want only those. I can select those, click load, and it will only load those pack files. So as you can see here, we have, it, lo it looks like a lot of stuff here because we loaded pack chunk zero, but in reality, we loaded a lot less than if we were to load everything. Now, by default, a single, of course, you know, it's just going to load a single pack file. You can't really do duplicates here. It won't let you do that. But you have all new and all modified. Now, these are going to be your saving graces when you actually decide to leak Fortnite. What all new will do is it will show you every single file that is actually added in a new update, and it won't show you old files at all. So if you only wanted to see what is brand new in the files, you're going to want to select all new. Now, if you wanted to see everything that was modified that already existed, but not things that were new as well, you would want to click all modified. Basically, it works the same way where it won't show you old files, but and it, it won't show you new files. It will only show you old files that had been modified in this update so let's say something that you look at every single update that you've noticed changes on changes it's an easier way to actually see if that file changed this update or not now if you don't already have a backup you want to click directory and backup now there's this create button and that will create a backup of Fortnite in your current version with your current download. Now if you use that actual creation, you use the one you just created, you're not going to find any new files because it is the files you currently have. If you want to download an older update to actually see those files, you want to click here. Find the version you want to download, which we only support uh, the start of Chapter 2 Season 6 due to how massive of a change this is. And then you want to click download. Now, once you've downloaded this, it actually goes to your output folder. And as you guys noticed, I changed that folder. So let's go to my documents, F model. It's going to put itself in your backups folder. Now, once you've actually gotten your backup that you want to use, just click X. And then for me, I'm going to do all new to kind of showcase the new files as I do this. You want to click load. It'll ask you what backup to choose. For me, I'm using V16.30. And then it's going to actually check the stuff and load only the new files. And as you can see, this already is looking a lot smaller than it was a minute ago when we loaded everything. Now, if you guys set up your icon generation earlier, if you followed along with the tutorial, then you will know what happens if you generate an icon. Which, if you want to go to some quick places, then just go over here to um, Assets, Directories, and you can find like the Cosmetics folder, Weapons folder, Strings folder, Emotes, Music Packs, that type of thing. For me, let's just go to the Cosmetics folder, which will take you here. This is all the new items for Fortnite Battle Royale cosmetic-wise. So for example, let's click on Dances and click on Broccoli. Now obviously this is going to be the code name of an actual older emote. So as you just saw in that clip there, I encountered an error which basically stopped me from generating this image right here. To quickly explain what happened there just in case it happened to you, it was unable to pull the mapping. So all these errors are basically talking about the mappings not being able to be pulled, and mappings are your way of actually seeing the Fortnite files and being able to actually generate all the text related to it. Now the reason for me for it not pulling the mappings was simply put, it didn't actually download them properly. I'm using a Wi-Fi extender and that kind of makes my Wi-Fi weaker and when trying to download the mappings it pretty much just failed on me so if you don't have the mappings already downloaded press F12 to download it if it doesn't download you don't get this little thing here saying mappings pulled then you may have to check your Wi-Fi settings to make sure your router and everything's good and you're not having any issues actually downloading stuff from the internet now, if there's another issue going on and you know that it's just, you have good Wi-Fi, but it's just not working, you definitely want to go over to the F Model Support Discord to figure out if there's any other help you can obtain on how to actually fix issues like this. But once we've actually generated stuff by clicking here, you can see all the info about it. We're using the Kataba design though, so we don't actually see like, introduced in season whenever, or like, oh hey, here's the set it's a part of. We just kind of get the baseline information, which still is useful. Now this plus right here, I think you can pretty much understand what that means. It's for anything that has like animations on it, is synced, is reactive, anything that has some special effect to it, such as traversal, will have that plus. Even some wraps will have it, so if you go here to the Astro map, you can see there's the plus there, that's because it's an animated wrap. So this is your way to pretty much generate icons and kind of debug what's going on if it won't actually generate. By simply put, you know, just making sure that you have the right mappings, make sure it says 16.40 or 16. whatever version you're on. Basically, if it's Chapter 2 Season 7, it might be 17.00. Just make sure whatever version is right here matches up with your actual Fortnite version. 
Now, something actually brand new in F Model 4 that you couldn't do in F Model 3.1 is taking this actual umbrella and just grabbing the image itself. So as you see here, there's a lot of these asset paths that are actually pinkish, they're like purplish, pinkish, whatever color you may see it as. And if you want to go to this exact file, you hold down control on your keyboard and then you click it. It will open up a new tab up here at the top, and as you can see, we basically just have the umbrella with no background. As you guys notice, there is this copy image button. If I copy an image and I paste it, since there is no background, it will have a little bit of a glitch effect to it. So for example here, I am actually going to um, go to Twitter here. And if I paste it, you can see it has this weird like glitch happening on it where it has the weird background. This is due to the transparency on it. There's no real way to fix it. So you can either save it as an image and then do it that way. Or you can copy this image that already has a background. Now, if you want to automatically save these images, just go to assets, auto, and then put on whatever you want to put on. Or you could just use F1 through F6. For me, I use F3 to just save the image. So now it's going to actually just save it naturally. If if it actually detected that. It's probably because I was in the menu that it didn't. So once the image is saved, you can go to your output folder, wherever that is, go to textures, and this is what I was talking about with the setting for um, keep directory structure. Since we have that on, we go to Fortnite game, content, Athena, items, cosmetics, gliders, and there is your umbrella. Right there, you can go put it on Twitter, do whatever you wanna do. So let's just extract two gliders here, two gliders, just so we can show this off. You've got your two gliders. You want to merge them together to make one image so you're not spamming your Twitter timeline. Or you just want it for a video. Understandable. All you have to do is click up here to views and then go to image merger. Put in your images here by clicking add. And then you go to wherever it's located at. For me, it's right here. Gliders. Pop both of those in there. And as you can see, boom, the image is right there. Now you can change the margin between images and all that does is change the spacing. It can go all the way from 50 to zero where they're completely connected to one another, but by default it'll be around like on five to 10 so that there is a little bit of space in between it. Images per row will actually change how many images show up on what row. So for example, for this we only have two images, they're gonna be on one row with the setting of two images per row. So to showcase what happens if we have like a third image here, we're just gonna grab a wrap and we're going to plop the wrap in here. Now, F model may automatically change that slider depending on how many images you have there, but for us, we didn't have that issue. So as you see with two, two on that row, one on this row. If I change it to three, we have all three on a single row. Now with this, you can right click, copy, and this is a new feature I actually suggested, which is being able to copy merged images. And then you can just paste it to Twitter if you want to. So if we go back over to the Twitter page here, boom, you got the image right there. Now, obviously if you have a margin and you copied, you still have the little like black bars, but it doesn't actually fully glitch out on you. Now you can also open the image to see it in like a bigger screen. You can see how it looks up close. You can click save image to actually save it. You have to put the name in. So I just call it like merge and it'll go to your base Fortnite F model folder here. So you can see there's the merge file and removing once you select one of these, we'll remove one of them. The arrow up moves it up or down, depending on which arrow you obviously clicked and which one you have selected. And then clearing will remove everything in the image merger. So pretty much that's how you merge images. It's pretty simple. You just add the images in there, push some buttons, change how it looks, and then you can copy it, save it, do whatever. Next up, let's talk about challenges. I know Squatting Dog clicked on this video. I know he skipped ahead to look at it. So let's say you want to leak a challenge. Of course you do. Now, right now, it, they're doing something very interesting and they're doing this for quite a few things. So some of the uh, like folders and files you're trying to look for may not be there right away. So for this, I'm gonna show the normal path and the new path that they've been using recently. So if you wanna just extract you know, your challenge bundles, you wanna see what an upcoming weekly challenge is, you can go to Athena, items, and then challenge bundles to see some of the challenge bundles for example the daybreak one is in this path which is kind of surprising and then in season 16 we have the stone viper challenges which is the snakes and stones challenge pack so let's just extract the daybreak one as you can see it tells you the name the title the description the reward you get and a little icon and to better show off that icon and everything it generates let's go to the stone viper one it may take a little bit longer depending on how many challenges it has, but it will pretty much just generate the challenges for you. It tells you the reward. This top text, the like bold text, is the actual challenge itself. 
The text right below it is the text that you can see from the NPC that's talking to you. And the one right below that one is the actual completion text. So once you complete the challenge, what it will say. And then this bar obviously tells you how many you have to do, so complete six uncommon or rare quests to do that. It's pretty simple, you know, it does a lot of generating to it, and challenge themes are gone once again, because instead it's actually sorted by rarity. So since these are rare challenges, they have a blue background. But if we had like a rare, a legendary, an epic challenge, they would all have their appropriate backgrounds to kind of tell you what rarity those challenges actually are. Now, let's say you've done all that, but you can't find the challenge sheet you're actually looking for. It may not be in the content folder. It might be in your plugins folder. So what we're going to do here is click plugins, battle pass season 16, items, and I don't really, actually, I do have it here. Okay, good. And it's going to be in whatever, like, battle pass season we're in. So right now it's technically season 16, but this order will be gone in season 17, so you might have battle pass S17. Basically, you either want to look for challenge bundles or you want to look for quest bundles. So for quest bundles, we have an unreleased quest here that I've actually talked about a little bit, the foreshadowing quest line. And as you can see, you have the dialogue, the XP you gain, all that glorious stuff right there. But let's actually um, go here to quest items. So let's say you only wanted a single quest instead of, you know, a whole bundle that shows you every single quest added. You can go to quest items, or up here, it's called con- uh, uh, actually, it's not up there, whoops. <laughs> but you can go to quest items, and you can click on one of these, and it'll tell you what that specific quest is without the whole entire bundle info really being there. So it's a way to only extract one quest if you want to showcase it. And like this one here, if it doesn't have an actual icon for an NPC, it just defaults to the black and the blacked out uh, Ramirez icon. So that's pretty much how you extract quest bundles and quest icons. Quest bundles is just right there. You know, it showcases any quest that's stacked up on each other as you saw earlier. And quest items is more of seeing a single quest instead of seeing the whole entire set of upcoming quests. Now, we also have quest schedules. This one isn't really that important. It's kind of just like, oh, hey, once uh, this event flag is enabled, these quests, these challenges will actually be given to players. And with that said, it's time to show you guys about the built-in map viewer. So, you know, quests are cool, cosmetics are cool, but what if I want to look at the map? Well, instead of having to find the map file every single update, we've made it easy on you. You can go into views and then click on the map viewer it will load the actual map here now you can't like right click copy image or whatever if you wanted to you could pull out share x kind of just like crop it to the part you want and save it that way but something very interesting is we do have a save image button so you can save it normally and if you want to see where all the npcs are just click on show patrol paths once you enable that, it will show you not only where NPCs are, but the path of where they can be. So as you can see, Willow can walk anywhere around this little like area. This is like their path that they walk around, so you can find them anywhere around there. And that's pretty much it. Now, something you will see here is that some NPCs will just say generic and be stacked up on each other. This is more of Epic Games having unfinished data. And there's no real way to hide that because, um, you know, it's just unfinished data. Now, if you click on the map or click on any image that you've really opened, you can actually zoom in with the scroll wheel, zoom out the scroll wheel. Heck, you can even go like super zoomed out where you have just a small map on top of an already big map. But, you know, that's just kind of like a goofy thing to mess around with if you want to get like a close up look at something. And if you zoom in too far, you will glitch it out. So just zoom out, you know, that fixes it. And we also have Show Cities. Now, Show Cities will tell you all the named locations, such as Coral, Sweaty, Holly, Weeping, etc. So it's a way to basically see, oh, hey, here's a location that is named for this season, which may be useful in a upcoming season when everyone's trying to figure out what's brand new. Now, the next part is to talk about generating icons for playlist LTMs. Um, so recently what they've been doing is whenever they prepare to actually bring an LTM into the game, they put it in plugins and then in this LTM folder. However, sometimes that changes, sometimes they just put it in content and then they put it in playlist, which can be found just right there. Sometimes they'll do that, but recently they've been putting them in this actual LTM folder. So for example, Daybreak is the impossible escape LTM, and right when I click this, there's the config folder, which could tell you a little bit of information with a lot of like, c 
code naming and dev comments, but you may not find the most information from it there. If you actually want to generate the playlist icon so other people can see how it will look, you just want to go to wherever the playlist folder is and look for a file called playlist underscore and then like your playlist name there. Once you find that, you just double click it and it will start loading it. Now some images will take longer to load than others depending on of course how fast your Wi-Fi is as the background images aren't stored on your computer. Now it tells you all the information and it may cut off if the description like this one is super long. That's just because uh, Epic Games likes putting a lot of information for no reason. Now not only will it work on this, but let's say you wanted to look at an unreleased LTM. It will work on that as well. So if we go down here, I, uh, I'm going to click on squads here. This one might actually have an image, I'm not for sure. It, as you can see, it's taking a little bit longer than normal just because it's going to take a moment to actually load it from an API. So quickly explain what's going on. It's grabbing the image, if available, from an actual API out there because these images aren't even on your own computer. Now, this will actually take a little bit, as you can see, it's actually Pickaxe Frenzy that we're looking at here, and this is something that I guess I can talk about. Whenever you're looking at the actual thing, if an image takes forever to generate, you can scroll down and you can find the description and display name. It'll be somewhere down there at to like towards the bottom. So if you can't get an icon to generate for whatever reason, as I might have to just cancel this one, you can definitely just go down here, copy and paste the description, and just be like, boop, boop, here's the information on an upcoming LTM. Now, it does look like this one's going to take a while to load, so I'm just going to press escape to cancel it. And that might take a minute. <laughs> so, with that said, hopefully that kind of explained how to generate playlist icons. Now, Creative actually does have playlists as well, because as you guys know, recently, Creative has been releasing a few playlists. Oh, there we go. There's the icon right there. Just took a lot of time. Now, Creative usually goes playlist, creative, creative, play only playlist, and then CLTMs. So we could go here, click like Primal Rumble, which is the most recently updated one, get the description of it, and then a little like background image. But what I really want to show off is what happens if you try grabbing an image of something that doesn't have an image yet. So I'm going to just click around here. Hopefully this one doesn't. I, I'm not really for certain. Okay, yeah, this doesn't. So if it doesn't have an image, you just get this base background with the little description right below it. So it, you still get an image, you just don't get the proper background if it's not available yet. Now, the next part we're going to talk about is emotes. Now, emotes, their sound files are actually, well, actually pretty much any sound file is supported by FModel. So by default, you actually have open sounds enabled. You can disable that if you want. But let's say we wanted to hear a sound of a new music pack. We can go to Athena, Sounds, Music Pack, and there's also some more sound folders. You just kind of got to look for sounds in general. And then we can click one of these. Now, the Q files don't actually have music because it's more of like, here's what to play and all the data on like the volume of it, the duration, basically how long it lasts, all that stuff. What you actually want is the one that doesn't say Q on it. So we click it and it's not coming through my headphones. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, this may happen where it goes through a different audio device. All you want to do is really click to change it here. So, for example, I'm using my Razer USB sound card. And there we go. Yeah, you just get some groovy music. You can go all the way down to like 2% or... Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to do it. And it will play the audio. You can pause it, unpause it, do all that glorious stuff. And, yeah, just kind of music player. <laughs> There's not really much to say about it other than that, which is just pretty cool because you can just listen to audio files as they're built into FModel itself. Now, audio files can exist for events and they can exist for all types of stuff. So who knows? One moment you may find just some chill vibes and the next moment you may get your ears blasted by a boss audio file that's just supposed to be a scream. It all really depends and that's why some people will actually turn off auto opening of sounds so that they don't get their ears blasted. Now, this last part of showing off icon generation is kind of just like showing misc stuff you can generate. So for example, in weapons, ah, actually not that folder. We want to go here, eh, wait, we have the directory folder. Da, 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 da. We can just go click on weapons, go to, and it'll take us here. 
Now, anything that says WID underscore can be generated, most likely unless it has some weird data in it, as an icon. So, for example, pickaxes like this will just say harvesting tool because there's a separate folder for the actual pickaxe ID when it's an actual, you know, cosmetic in your locker. Then we have WID as assault rifle, auto high Athena SR gold wrap, aka the assault rifle over by Orella in their little island, you know, where you can pay tribute or steal it. As you can see here, fully automatic, it tells you the damage damage to player, magazine size, fire rate, reload time. And now let me explain this right away since I know people are gonna ask if they see it. If you generate something such as a fish, let's say a flopper, it will say that the damage to player by default is 40. That's just a placeholder value by Fortnite themselves, but obviously you're not going to actually be able to damage someone with a flopper. Trust me, I've tried throwing them at people. You can't really damage them with a flopper that I know of at least, unless it explodes or something like the cuttlefish. And I guess I have to talk to the creative crowd out there. So Epic Games has been doing some finicky stuff with creative mode recently that actually causes some leaks to have a little bit less information than I personally would like as someone who leaks every mode, save the world, creative mode, whatever it may be. And simply put, they now put creative devices in the plugins game features folder. So as you can see, we already have the creative folder open up here, but they've really changed it around and it's gotten a little bit better with F model four than an F model 3.1, but you're going to actually have to click on devices, the actual device name, and then content to find the actual thing you want. Oh, nope, I messed up. You want to click on content and then set up assets. You want to look for the PID underscore. Now this will be the one that actually generates the data on the creative device. And as you can see, the clipboard is, it's, it's an unreleased feature that sends a signal when the currently playing video reaches the defined timestamp. So it's definitely something interesting that Epic Games is working on that's unreleased as of right now, but they have been making changes. So you have to actually click around, look for PID underscore. Now the CP folder won't really load anything. It just tells you some information that uh, maybe you can make something out of it. I'm not really going to go in detail on what this is for, but if you just want the icon of unreleased creative stuff, you definitely want to look for PID. Now there is also the search feature. You know, I gotta save it for last, you know, I gotta make sure I bore everyone out, make sure the impatient people have left the video, but let's explain the search feature, shall we? So you can usually press Control shift f sometimes it doesn't actually detect you doing it, and that could be because you're selected in here, so make sure you click over here to like the right or somewhere else, and then click Control shift f to bring it up. This is your way of searching for something very specific, so let's say we want PID underscore. Type it in, and then we press enter, boom! there's all the things with PID underscore in it. For example, we have this, which is in a completely different folder, such as the fishing rod barrels, the hub V2 logo gallery, and an island. Now, the reason I haven't clicked the island yet is because when I click it, the name's gonna look bugged. As you can see here, it just says island 235x235. This is because islands have two different IDs. So if we actually just take the name here, go back to the search feature, Put the name in there you can see there is playgrounds item plots the plots folder is where you're going to get the actual island name and description so you they do have two separate ids so sometimes something may give you a little bit more information on something that is technically already there so you got to look around a little bit and that's just kind of something you can look for there i'll see if i can do some work on f model 4 once it comes out to fix up directories a little bit and make the default ones for fortnite have a lot more actual locations that could be super useful when it comes to leaking now it's time to swap over to modified mode to actually showcase what happens when you want to see like new strings or whatever so what we're going to click here is you know click all that stuff click modified and then we're going to go to assets, directories, and click on strings. We'll click go to, and it'll take us to localization. Now, each of these actually show you different things. So these right here, 1000 plus, those will be for decrypted stuff. So if you click it, it's just kind of like, you know, very little bits of information, but it's for something that's already been decrypted. And you don't really touch those because at the end of the day, it doesn't really have that much information you can go off of. I mean, even here, the NBA championship trophy, uh, it just doesn't really have that much information to go off of other than, oh, hey, it's a back, it has the back bling and banner icon in it. Now, where you do get information is engine overrides, where if you click this and sometimes you'll have two, they're the exact same thing. Don't worry about it. It will tell you all of this information. 
And let me explain this. For localization, the left side's kind of like a code name. The right side's what you can see in game. And if you see stuff such as HTC Vive, that just means that they support the controller scheme. It doesn't mean that that's actually going to come to the game where you could like play Fortnite in VR. As certain things such as this have existed for literally like maybe a year or two years at this point in the Fortnite files. But if you want to see all the juicy strings that have your favorite info in it, you're going to want to look at Lock Chunk 10 and Fortnite. The reason I say that is the Fortnite one tells you the base amount of information, the base strings you'll see, such as Agent Pilly got a spy license by spying on the other agents. Enjoy this reward. And all the way at the bottom having stuff, just, you know, more strings. In reality, these are just going to be a lot of text that you can kind of cipher through, see if there's anything hidden in there. But where you're going to find the most amount of data, the most amount of text, and probably the most amount of your confusion is going to be Lock Chunk 10. Because simply put, this as you can see by the scroll bar, has everything. <laughs> now, a lot of this is just going to have, you know, a random string to the left that's called a namespace, and to the right's going to have the actual data. Now, there may be a lot of duplicate strings, just kind of ignore that, and, you know, kind of look through it. But I would say if you want to look at something like the strings, I am going to redirect you away from F model. It's kind of like a shameless plug, but at the end of the day, it's just an easier way for you to deal with this. There's going to be a link to a localization tracker that I actually run on GitHub. Now, every single update, I pretty much add the data for the new update, the main Locres files, and some any files. So if you wanted to track those, I would say that you might want to use my resource that I post publicly. I try to update it right when an update comes out because it may be easier for you to understand than actually looking at everything. The reason why I mention this is because if we click V16.40, what we'll actually notice is it shows you, oh, hey, this was changed. This specific line was changed to say this. So it breaks down updated files for you and tells you, hey, these specific lines have been updated. These are the new ones. Instead of you just sitting here and being like, um, yeah, that was updated. I don't know what happened though, but uh, something changed. So definitely consider checking out my localization tracker if you're not already tracking these on your own, as it could be a useful resource. But that is kind of how you look at strings. And now let's say you have your own tracker. You want to export this for own use. Now you can export the data raw by right clicking, just exporting data, and it'll save it as a .locres file in your exports folder in the exact same path if you have that enabled like me. Or you can right click save properties and what this will do will save it as a JSON file. Now personally that's what I do for GitHub so that GitHub can actually track it properly and see oh hey this is the data inside of it as sometimes GitHub gets finicky when it's in a different folder format such as locres. So that's how you can extract the raw JSON of any file. The data will extract the raw files, such as .uasset, .locres, as you can see here. And then, saving texture, it's not going to lurk, work on a loc chunk because there is no image there. So don't expect a texture to export if there is no texture for you to even see here. Just keep that in mind. Now, if I do go up to like an item, let's see here, is this, that's just item categories. If I go up to an item here, cosmetic variant tokens, I can right click here to save the texture and this will go to your default texture folder. So this won't be sorted properly. I can right click here to save the image. Same exact thing I mentioned, right click to open it uh, and copy it. And here's the whole zoom thing I mentioned. You just hold down your mouse button on an image. When you open it, it doesn't work when you click here or export data and save properties. Save properties always exports it as a JSON and exporting the data always exports it at whatever the actual data would be, such as in this case, a .u asset. So when you go in here, you can see that. Now a .u asset, if we open up in here, it's kind of just like a little bit less information, a little bit kind of broken. Uh, you, you'll need a hex editor to see that properly, but you're not really going to get that much information differently than if you just exported the JSON, which is this right here that you can see on my screen. Now, for probably the last topic I can think of as of right now to talk about when it comes to Fortnite is meshes. This is something new, and materials technically, that F model actually supports. So what we're gonna do here is go to auto, save materials, and actually save meshes isn't showing up here, 
but it is in the keybinds, so saving, uh, oh, actually, nope, it was removed. Never mind. <laughs> so saving meshes is something that is set to come out in the near future if they can really, you know, get it fully set up, get it fully supported. So we're just going to show off the saving materials part of it. So a material is basically multiple textures all combined together. Most likely you're going to find it in like a UI section here. So we're going to go here, look for a material icon just so I can kind of like showcase it. Here we go. A material for V-Buck coins. If you click this, what it will do is actually extract all of the textures that is used by this material. It will take a little bit longer than normal, as you see right there. But if we go all the way back here to our textures folder and we go up here to, oh, it's even extracting some engine uh, images. As you can see, it's extracting every single texture it uses for that V-Buck icon. And there could be a lot of textures in a single material, so you may have just a lot of extra data there that you may not even be using. And it's just completed. Now, it won't show anything here because obviously it's multiple textures in one, but if we control left click, it takes us to the texture it exported. And all of these will be in their proper folders, in their proper locations, so, yeah, if you, you, you can export materials if you want to see everything included in it, or if you don't want to actually save all of them, what you can do is not automatically save materials and not automatically save textures. Just double click it to load the data, go through here, hold control, and click a file to see what it actually calls on so that you're not saving like a hundred random textures that may not matter, as you guys saw me here with engine debug materials you, you're not going to find a leak from a debug material you're not really going to find any leaks in the engine folder which as you can see is right there you're not really going to find anything there regarding to leaks but it's still there it will still detect stuff and extract it if it's related to the material being used so exporting materials is something newer in f model 4 but it is useful if you do use it right and you don't accidentally spam your hard drive with a hundred files with that said, however, to end off this video, I'm just going to click through some random files while talking to you guys. If you're starting to data mine Fortnite, you're getting into this whole like Fortnite data mining stuff, please go into it just because you want to learn about how this stuff actually works and because you want to see the cool files that are unreleased. Maybe you can share it with your friends. But don't try data mining Fortnite because you want to be like famous, you want to have a following. Because I'm just going to be real with you guys here, I'm going to be just 100% transparent. The Fortnite data mining scene, there's so many people in it, it's so like oversaturated that by the time you find something, you, it might have already been found by a lot of other people. And don't let this be like a way to tell you to not post anything you find, but at the same time, just don't go into data mining Fortnite hoping to be famous, hoping to get a following or whatever. Just do it because you find it interesting, because you want to experience something new, or because, you know, maybe you want to make your career in computers in the future. Use this as a way to start exploring the unknown and exploring how stuff works. But with that said, my name's FireMonkey. I hope this video helped you out. It kind of went all over the place because... I had to show off everything because I wanted to make sure, one, that the video didn't miss out on any bits of information. The one thing I do know I didn't talk about was this, where you can add extra tabs. But, uh, yeah, uh, there's really no point to do this. <laughs> you can add extra tabs if you want. It will slow your computer down if you add too many. Disclaimer. Don't open up too many of these. But, um, yeah, I hope this video helped you get started with F Model 4, and keep in mind, things are going to change in the future. This tutorial may become out of date one day. So consider just investigating. Try figuring out what's going on, and try, you know, if something's not working for you, try figuring out, try... <laughs> if something's not working for you, just try to find ways to get it to work it may be an issue with f model it may just be you doing something incorrect and keep in mind the f model discord is there to help you personally i am not f model support so don't ask me for help because i'm i'm busy doing my own stuff such as these youtube videos but with that said my name's fire monkey like comment subscribe if this helped you and i am out thanks for watching and i hope you have a wonderful time data mining fortnite or any other unreal engine game out there i mean heck you could even data mine valorant with this you pretty much get the base premise here but with that said i'm actually out this time peace